Welcome to this week's new tech show from EMBN. It's that time of month where we look at all the latest tech from all over the world, from all the different manufacturers out there. And this month, we're talking about all the upgrades and accessories you should be checking out. Right, Steve, what's all the latest tech that you've been checking out then? Well, fortunately for me, I'm in a bike shop, so I get to see loads of stuff that arrives. I mean, nice. we've got some uh, chocolate chip cookies. We've got some, what are these, Martin? What flavor are those? I have no idea, but All right, Martin's having one. Uh, but uh, yes, I have actually got some new products. I've got um, cool. Granite Designs, which is part of Fun MTB. So slots in top of the steerer. Uh, I mean, this is similar to the specialized SWAT design. So you've got all your tools in there. I can see you've got Torx, so you've got, um, Six, seven, eight mils. You've got, yeah, I mean, this is, an, I mean, how many times do you leave the house without a tool in your backpack? Very cool. Yeah, I think it's good, isn't it? Depend that you know, having that tool on your bike at all times is going to save all those mechanicals where you're stuck in the middle of nowhere. I've also got these bar, this bar end, um, mm -hmm. oh, Craigie, there's a bar end chain tool there, but I think they've also Whoa. got a bar end tire mm -hmm. plug, a tubeless. Um, uh, tubeless fixing set. I think that's so. Basically, you've got you know chain breaker, tubeless, yeah. all the tools there. Uh, mm. I, I mean, this weighs like next to nothing. So um, price though, uh, price on these. Hello, prices. $49.99, isn't it? So as I said, don't even need to go on online. You can actually ask the prices in house. Forty nine ninety nine. So I'll leave the description down below. Uh, Chris, nice. um, apart from stash stuff and biscuits. Mm -hmm. uh, that's all I got from the shop. Really? But uh, I do see the new Intend uh, forks. W yeah, weird. the Intend weird, right? Bandit. They are odd looking fork. It, you know, just looking at those forks kind of makes me feel a little bit, un, uh, you know, imbalanced. But if I saw them at the front of the bike, I think I'd be, you know, thinking that something's missing or something's slipped down out of, out of uh, shot, you know, the stanchion or something. But what does it feel like to feel imbalanced? <laughs> Been feeling that way for quite a few years. But these forks, I think they look cool. I think they're different and I think, you know, bringing different stuff into the mountain bike world or e-bike world is quite a challenge. And I think Intend have done pretty good for this, but it comes in at quite a price, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, so 2,000 euros. Um, and also they weigh in at 2,390 grams. Now, say a Fox 36 comes in at about 1,900 grams. So the weight isn't super heavy. I mean, it's 29 uh, or 27.5. So in 10 say, uh, it's no heavier than a standard fork, but way more performance, way more performance. I mean, that's big talk there by having a perfect spring curve, maximum bushing distances. Gareth, I'm not eating those biscuits uh, and for the lowest friction on the brake side and stiff uppers with a double crown on the left side um, there's some strong words there Chris strong claims but I think if you're looking at it from an engineering point of view then you can definitely see as we know a dual crown is way stiffer than a single crown hence why the downhill and freeride guys use it so potentially if you've got that braking forces going on on that extended stanchion side then yeah, it makes sense. But I just can't go over the looks of the thing. Good guys, so folks, let's know your thoughts. A single crown, double crown, or a fork such as the Intend, which is more of a hybrid. Uh, now moving on now to something a little less expensive, and that is the crank stick. Uh, uh, now this is a tool which allows you to uh, lubricate your chain. Mm -hmm. So with the, fr with the front free wheel going on in the motor, when it comes to like chain maintenance, checking your chain, lubing your chain or inspecting it, you're going to find you're going to be able to turn the cranks, but the chain won't actually move. Now, we can obviously bodge this with an Allen key going into your crank, etc., and resting it on the crank arm. That will uh, engage that free wheel backwards. But this tool is made of plastic. It is designed for the job. And I think as we know, it is, you know, key to have those right tools for the job. It just makes it a lot easier. You're not going to get your crank scratched and I think it's cool. Well, you say that, Chris, you say that. I mean, you're implying that I bodge by using an Allen key. I actually use a stick. So- Oh, a stick, uh, a soft so stick. The thing is a soft stick isn't going to damage your cranks, right? 
No, but I don't think you can get that stick available in a Sam Pilgrim edition like you can the crank stick, can you? Well, Sam Pilgrim has got a lot to learn, that's all I can say. Uh, now, <laughs> folks, it is that time of the year where it's time for mud guards. Well, actually, any time of the year in the UK is a good time for mud guards. Uh, and recently, I caught up with the mud hugger guys who've got a new yeah. bolt on version uh, of their very popular mud guard. Obviously, already they come out with a zip tie version or um, a Velcro version, but you know, it can be difficult to uh, get your bike in the back of a car if you've got a zip-tied uh, mudguard on there because you take the wheel out and the mud gets, just gets bent. Uh, so yeah, uh, caught up with the mud hugger guys. So definitely a bit of a winter Northern Hemisphere theme on the show this week. And uh, I'm glad to say we've got Bruce and Jay here from Mud Hugger. Uh, now, I have to say, if there is one product that will help you get a better performance on your e-bike over the winter, Months, I definitely would recommend fitting a mud guard to your bike because that means you're not going to have any mud in your face or your eyes so you're going to be able to focus on the trail. Now I've had a zip tie version of the mud hugger on my bike for many years. They also do a velcro one as well but it seems that the time has gone for the old zip tie because uh, mud hugger have now come out with a new bolt on. They still do the velcro version but I think uh, Bruce, this is the evolution, right, of, of a project which has been going on for quite a few years. Yeah, after, after five years of the FRX, we've uh, come up with the Evo, the Evolution, and it comes with bolt-on, as Steve says, but we've updated its looks, we've tried to make it look a bit slicker, we've tried to create more clearance, remove any collision, in, collision issues, uh, and actually give you more protection whilst not making it too enormous. Now it does look substantially stronger than, than the old mudguard. Not that I'm saying there's anything wrong with the old mudguard because it, uh, it's been on there for some time. Yeah, yeah. No, we've, we've had to stiffen it up a bit um, purely because if you're going to bolt something on you haven't got the same number of attachment points. You need to make it stiffer to stop the tail of the front of the mudguard actually slapping the back of the tyre and that was a really important design feature for us. Right. You don't want that as a distraction. Yeah. Uh, Total distractions, we're just waiting for that bell to uh, ring. Yes. <laughs> uh, now, it seems to me it's, there's, uh, it, it seems quite more complex than the standard one. You've got, you seem to have got a step in the, in the yeah. profile of, of the mudguard there. Yeah, one of the, the weaknesses with nearly all the mudguards that strap underneath that fork arch is quite a lot of forks at full compression actually come down below the height of this and can hit the back of the mudguard eventually breaking it, snapping the zip ties, whatever. And we wanted to avoid that at all costs with a bolt on in particular, because you could shear off the bolts in your, in your forks and you're not gonna be very happy about that. Yeah. So we've put a lower step down in here to create the gap. So at full compression, it can't hit the back. Um, so that's why you see this double step effect. Now, Bruce, I've actually looked at forks for probably 20 years. Do you know what? I did not realize that there were uh, threads in the back of a fork arch. And, and this is the method that the, 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 um, the mud guards attached, right? Yep, straight into the, the pre-threaded holes in the back of your fork arch. And not all forks have them. Right. So what we're looking at here is a mud guard which can fit straight on to what? A Fox 36, Fox 38? Pretty much all the Fox range right. we've got catered for. Uh, RockShox have just released the Zeb. Yep. That's got bolt holes in the back, yep. so it'll go for the Zeb and Olin's as well. A lot of Mazoki forks, because they're now owned by Fox, use the same arch, this arch here. Yep. So again, that works with a number of the Mazoki forks. So Bruce, because each of the forks are different shapes, I see you've got some spaces there, which I, I take it are for different forks. Yes. Or, or do you need to order a kit which comes with a, for a specific fork? The standard. Um, Mudugger Evo bolt-on kit will be the kit that will work with all the Fox Forks and the Mazokis and that will all have all the bits you need to make it work with that. If you've got a Zeb fork or a Olin's fork you'll need to buy the little fitting kit that goes with that where there's another adapter plate to, a, to allow for the, the very different design of that fork arch. Yes, mudguards, a key part of riding in the UK to uh, keep your vision and line mm -hmm. choice intact. Do you use mudguards 12 months a year, Chris, or is it a seasonal thing for you? Just a seasonal thing for me, Steve. I think, you know, I was, first time I rode an e-bike without a mudguard was a few years back and it was winter and I couldn't believe how much 
you know, more covered I got than a standard mountain bike. I guess it's just the speed that we're riding in these winter conditions and those big tires flicking it up in your face all over the bike. I was absolutely plastered. So it is a definite go-to for me over winter for yeah. an e-bike. Uh, so let's move on now then to a bit of, uh, bit of protection. Uh, we move, from, you know, moving from the bike to the body. Pox Tactile Race Spin uh, NFC Helmet. Uh, Came in at 220 pounds, wide range of sizing from extra small to XXL. Um, it's a really decent helmet and it's got the safety features on it. Um, now you're, you're, you're a man who's knocked yourself out a fair amount of time, so talk us through the safety features. Yeah, so this, is, as you mentioned already, is absolutely loaded with all that safety features on it. Um, what is cool it has the NFC, which, uh, NFC chip, which is near field communication. So if you're not familiar what this is, it's actually, it's compatible with a smartphone. So say you come across a rider that was knocked out on the side of the trail, you can just scan this code and it will give you all their emergency details, you know, where they live, their name, contact numbers, things like that. It's really important. And I think uh, the emergency services are using all that. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, a member of the public could simply do that with an iPhone. It's got that NFC built into it. So it's really cool. Um, another and also a very cool looking helmet, I think. Definitely, and there's a few other safety features on it, Steve, as well. You've got the Reco reflector on there, meaning you've got the emergency service again, actually use this to locate people out on the mountain. So if you're lost, even in like deep snow or deep in the forest, they can actually pick this up with their radar. And of course, all the other features on it, uh, EPS liner stops at head rotating and the Aramid bridge just rounds that package off. So I think it's a really good helmet if safety is top of your list. There you go guys, knock yourselves out. Uh, go and check out the POC website and choose your colors and range of sizing. So wheels are a vital part of any e-mounted bike and they do have to be super tough uh, for several reasons to do with the increased amount of riding and also the slightly heavier weight of an e-mountain bike. Uh, Chris, I saw that Raceface have come out with a A-Effect R-wheel set, uh, $400, which is pretty reasonable, 30 mil wide alloy rims, 32 spoke. Uh, they roll on trace hubs, which you've got a steel axle, which is very important, but also a steel free hub. Now, uh, this is, I think this is an increasingly uh, popular part of e-mountain bike wheels, right? Yeah, definitely. I think I've, I've been there, as I'm sure you have, when you replace your drivetrain. Well, maybe you haven't, but I definitely have been changing my cassettes regularly. And it does become a faff if you've got an alloy freer body on there, trying to battle that cassette off where it's chewed into that spline. Whereas if you've got a steel version, you're just going to be able to pull it straight off, just as it should be. Yeah. And do you know what, Chris? There's actually a person phoning the shop as we speak to book in their... their um, uh, rear free wheel hub to get removal. the free hub removed, yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, available in a load of sizes, uh, 29 and 27.5, uh, and as I mentioned, different hub widths as well. Uh, it's Martin busy with the uh, the photocopy there in the background as well. It's flat out here, flat out here at A-Cycles. Good, it's good, uh, good to moving see. Moving now a little bit into the middle of the bike, uh, Pembry mm -hmm. pedals. Um, yep. These are pedals used by Rob Warner recently. Mm -hmm. uh, no doubt he's on a $100,000 contract. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, so, and obviously so you should, they come in at 180 pounds for the R1V yeah. model. They also yeah. do a D2A, which is slightly, slightly cheaper, 109 mm -hmm. pounds. Uh, yeah. SKF bearings, which will last mm -hmm. ages. And yeah. a good news, Chris, a five year warranty. Yeah, I think, I think they look good. And I think if you distribute how many sets of pedals you, you will potentially use over five years, then that price doesn't seem you know, too bad. And we're talking proper British engineering here, decent pedals, uh, decent bearings, decent stainless steel parts in all of their pedals. So built to last, so yeah, pricey, like, but could be worth it. Like you say, stainless steel bolts, axle and pins for ultimate strength and also corrosion resistance. Uh, so yeah, a very nice set of pedals. Check out Pembry. Now, something I've been seeing quite a lot of on social media too is a recent release of the awesome Crank Brothers shoes. Now, there's a couple of different shoes in this lineup and it goes in line with their flat pedals and their clip pedals. They have the Stamp model and the Mallet model. And have you seen these, Steve? Uh, what the crank shoes? Mm -hmm. um, uh, no, I have, I've seen some pictures on them online. Yeah, they seem pretty good. There's the Fabio Wibmo ones, right? Yeah, so Fabio's got a signature lace up flat pedal model, which looks really good. You've got super sticky soles on there, which is a match compound. So this is Crank Brothers' own compound, makes that sole super sticky, much like your 510s, ride concepts, things like that. But then, of course, we have the clip 
models. You mean with the one with the, with the sort of boa closure? Yeah, so this is the mallet clip shoes. So you've got a boa closure on there, which, can you explain the boa closure to us, Steve? Do you, are you knowledgeable well, yeah, about that Yeah, the one? boa, I, yeah. I mean, the boa is a very simple system, which mm. just, well, you know, it just goes zzz, zzz, and it tightens your, tightens your, uh, your shoes up. But Definitely. I'm really liking the look of these pedals, the, yeah. these shoes. I mean, mm -hmm. the gum soles, the very neat um, black uppers. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, did I not say that I've actually got a pair of those shoes? You've got a pair of those, have you? I bet you've got the white Fabio Whippen ones uh, for going out downtown in. I've actually got the black ones. Have you? And they're yeah. very cool looking shoes. Yeah, definitely. I think that's really important with Crank Brothers. They've took a bit of, you know, cool styling with this. Some other shoe brands are a bit like, mm, a bit on the styling. But these things, I think you could wear, you know, down the high street and not get funny looks. Yeah. Yeah, Chris, I'm looking forward to getting these into the dirty, nasty, horrible Welsh gullies. And I'll be doing it this week. <laughs> and I think price-wise, pretty reasonable as well. One, 129 euros for that basic flat pedal model, going up to 199 euros for that full boa clip shoe as well. So yeah, good prices too. Time now to move from flats to feet. Uh, again, super cold time of the year. And if you're out on your bike, it's amazing how cold your feet can get if you're not wearing wool or merino socks. But Chris, there are alternatives, right? Yeah, a question I see over and over again currently on Facebook and things like that is how do I keep my feet warm? I've tried these waterproof socks, I've tried these shoes, etc., etc. But I think these from an Endura uh, overshoes, so they're stolen from the roadie world. But these are available for flat pedals, meaning you can still run like your favorite 510s or whatever for that flat pedal grip but it's gonna keep your feet nice, warm, dry. And I think if you combine them with trousers, you're gonna be protected for whatever. And these do really you know, work amazingly. And they're only 50 quid, and you simply slip them on over your existing flat pedal shoes. Winner for winter. Chris, I really like the, I really like the sound of this. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm all for protection, as yep. you know. Uh, I it's better so than the welly, Steve, I'll give you that. Oh, well, I wouldn't go that <laughs> That's big far. talk. That's big I talk, wouldn't, I suppose. I wouldn't, I don't think, in I don't think overshoes are going to get anywhere near wellies. Certainly not <laughs> Michelin sole wellies, that's for sure. Uh, and obviously, many of us are still riding at night, and it is crucial to get uh, some good visibility. Now, me and Chris are a little bit torn uh, whether you need just a handlebar, handlebar mounted light or a handlebar and a helmet mounted light. I'm all, I think if you've got one solid handlebar light, then that is enough. But ah. uh, Exposure do have a new light, don't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do. It's called the Flex E-Mountain Bike Light. So this comes in oh, whoa, at three. Whoa, 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 can I stop you there? What, it's an E-Mountain Bike Light? Yeah, so it's an EMTB specific light. So it is made for E-Mountain Bikes now. And it can pump out 3,300 lumens on certain, system, uh, certain systems. And it's compatible with all the major players uh, Bosch, Brose, Shimano, and Yamaha. And the great thing about this light is that it's going to plug straight into your battery. So you've got a live feed coming from your battery, meaning you don't have to have a battery pack elsewhere on your bike or on your backpack, etc. It's just nice, um, you know, bar remote on there so you can change the beam up, you know, higher power. It's just really simple stuff coming from exposure. Um, Okay. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. I mean, 3,300 lumens, that is more than a car produces. Yeah, definitely. And the great thing as well, it's got that reflex technology on there, so it's actually going to dim down that power when you're going slow speed, say, on a climb, where you don't need that intense light. And then once it feels that it's going up to speed, it raises the brightness, so you've got, you know, you've got real good vision for those downhill sections. So pretty tech stuff. So there you go, guys. Uh, a spotlight on all things new in the tech world this month. Uh, thanks for joining us. Let us know if there are any tech products that you'd like to see featured uh, on our tech show. Uh, like I said, we're going to keep us, keep you guys updated every month on this. Uh, Chris, thanks for all that. Uh, no worries. Anything else to end off? I think that's everything, Steve. Yeah, just make sure you subscribe to us here on EMBN. Check out the EMBN shop and give us a find on follow and uh, give us a find and follow on social media. Cheers for watching and see you next month.